All right, hey everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, whether this is your maybe your first Wattify webinar, you've been to a couple of them, we're super excited for the webinar today. We've got a special guest, uh, Jason Kalipa from NC Fit On, and we are going to really dig into some uh, tactical strategies for reopening your gym after maybe a shutdown for coronavirus, and you have to think through challenges like class size, reservation, uh, programming. We're, we're gonna dig into a lot of really good stuff today. We're super excited to have Jason on. Uh, we also have Carla, an account manager here at Wattify. Um, she is the expert at all things Wattify. So I'm really excited about this webinar because we're gonna combine um, really, you know, tactical experience from a, from a gym owner and operator with Jason Kalipa with the, the how-to um, actually set that up in, in Wattify. So we've got the technical expertise, got the gym owner expertise. I'm gonna get, kind of take a backseat role here, um, but just some quick housekeeping before we get into it. Uh, if you register for this webinar, you're on, you're automatically going to get an email with the recording of the webinar. So don't worry, we're gonna send you the recording. And we're also gonna send you a follow-up email with a PDF template that we're gonna be walking through today. Um, so we'll get to that template in a bit, but just know that we will be sending all of that as a follow-up in an email. Uh, and the last thing is on the right side of your screen, you'll see a questions tab. Please, as we're going through this webinar, um, ask questions as we go. We, we might pick off a few, but we'll definitely leave some time at the end to go through hopefully all the questions or as many as, many as we possibly can. Um, so if it's a question for Jason uh, or for Carla about how to do something in Wattify, please drop them in that questions tab um, and, uh, and we'll get to them as we go. Um, so that is the intro for me. Uh, Jason, I'm going to hand it off you, to you to talk about, um, I think most people probably know who you are in NC Fit, but if you can give us just kind of the quick background on uh, NC Fit and then tell us the story of you're in California. It's been one of the most heavily impacted by coronavirus shutdowns. Can you, can you talk to us about what you've been doing at NC Fit um, during this during this pandemic, and uh, we'll start there. Yeah, sure. So thanks for thanks for having me, Brendan and uh, Carla. I'm I'm super excited for this webinar because I think it's a great bridge between practical application and then also at the same time actually being able to act on it. You know, Wattify has a lot of resources, a lot of um, ability to help us, especially for gym owners right now. Most of us didn't have class reservations before COVID. And most of us are gonna to need to pivot to class reservations post COVID. So this is a really important topic. And I think for any gym that hasn't reopened, this is a great time. If you have reopened, maybe you could learn from some of the things that I'm sharing and, and, and maybe you can even send in some, some feedback on how it's been going for you. So to start off with um, NC Fit, um, our business has three verticals. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what we do, um, we have open to the public gyms, just like probably everybody listening to here. We have corporate wellness locations where we provide fitness for companies all around the world. And then we have a digital footprint to our business, which is for the end user and then also for gym owners called the NC Fit Collective. So those are the three pillars that we have. Um, and uh, we had to shut down all of our locations. So every one of our locations got shut down when COVID happened and that was a huge hit. Thankfully, um, you know, we've pivoted and we've gone more towards the digital route as many owners have as well. And we are excited to get back from that bridge to back in the gym. And I think in California in particular, I think we'll probably be you know, reopening within the next month. And so right now is a really good time for us as an organization to start saying, hey, what types of considerations are we making for class sizes, participation, um, programming, and, um, and how are we gonna ramp this back up? And so that's what we really wanted to talk about today. So to begin with, um, I, I just jotted down some notes. Um, you know, I think the first step that we need to understand is that this is a super evolving situation and that you need to constantly be getting feedback from your members on ways that, you know, you could pivot and evolve just like you have over the last, you know, couple of months being closed. Um, we are waiting in California for word from the government and state and local county regulations on what our class capacity is going to be. If we had a permit, like right now I'm in one of our locations and our permitted access is, let's just say, I don't know, 50 people. Well, if they're saying, hey, we have 50% occupancy, that's a consideration that we need to take into consideration when we're looking at our class capacity. But things that we're thinking about at our gym are, um, 
identifying peak training times, right? And ensure we have classes at those times and groupings around them. So that would be, you know, five, 6 a.m. are always peak times for us, the midday, and then obviously the evenings. And we're gonna start there. So the way we're looking at it is, you know, at the location I'm sitting at right now, we had 100 classes a week here because we have two floors and it was constantly going. But when we reopen, we're not gonna start with 100 classes because our payroll expense is gonna go through the roof. And so when we start, we're gonna be looking at things like, um, what are our peak times? How do we couple those classes? And how do we start off slow? And then as the classes start to fill up, then start adding more and more and more. So um, safety's first, complying with local and state laws, um, and then looking at obviously the member experience are critical for us. Um, but what we're thinking about is occupancy is a concern specifically for overlapping. And so that's something you wanna think about. If you have a 6 a.m. class and you have a 7 a.m. class, and then during that time you have, you have overlap, that might be a challenge if one of your state or local officials come in. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be having 50 minute classes with you know, 10 to 15 minute break in between. And it doesn't require that we have to start on the hour or half hour. I think that was something that was put into most of our minds early on that, hey, you have a 6 a.m. class, a 7 a.m. class. Well, could you have a 5.15 and a 6.30? I mean, you could. At one of our locations, we incorporated this a while ago because of parking. Parking was an issue, so what we did is we had 3 p.m. and then like, you know, 4.15 as an example, and that started to help where people were coming in and going out. So that's something I want to start with is we're gonna start off with our class schedules during peak times. We're gonna start off with significantly less classes than we normally had, build up the, the demand, and then start adding more, specifically because we're concerned about our overhead with payroll, supplies, all that kind of stuff. Start off smooth and then grow our way up. Other things we're taking into consideration is that classes don't need to be, right, an hour. They could be a little bit different. They don't have to start on the hour. And that gives our staff time to clean the gym instead of making a requirement for members, which consistency might be tough. Um, when it comes to programming, I think there's been a lot of conversation about this. And when we talk about programming as an organization, you might say, like, oh, should we program so that people, you know, aren't switching back and forth on the rower as an example or should we program so we have enough room for this and that and it's very difficult to program for us we have a lot of gyms that use our programs including our own and they each are on slightly different scales so for us we're not programming specific for covid we're programming um specific for when members are coming back in and introduced to intensity and introduced to complexity so here's what i mean instead of going out there and programming like uh i don't know for example, you're just gonna row and then there's gonna be a five minute break and then we're gonna row again so that during that five minute you can clean the equipment. We're not gonna be programming in that fashion, but what we are gonna be taking into significant considerations is loading, volume, and then repetition, right? And starting people back off, you know, kind of really focusing on the mechanics, consistency, then intensity. Because there's gonna be a lot of people, including myself, yesterday I got on a barbell for the first time in a while and your brain is gonna tell you one thing, but your body might tell you something else. So we're really paying attention to those type of things. We're not doing one rep maxes, okay, to start off with for sure. It's gonna take us about two months to build that back up. We're gonna avoid some of the baseline or um, kind of like these uh, kind of like historical CrossFit um, uh, benchmarks because we don't, want, we don't want to place somebody in this setting for like Fram and they used to get two minutes and now they're gonna go out there and try and hit that same thing. We want to allow them to build back up into this intensity and, 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 and do that over time. After you know four to six weeks, let's start doing it. But in the beginning, we're going to focus on uh, uh, limited one rep maxes, really looking at threes and fives. We're looking at tempo work instead of just going for those one rep maxes. And we're going to avoid um, these benchmarks that you're letting people kind of build back up. For us, we have um, three programs that we incorporate at our gym. We have NC Metcon which is our most similar to traditional CrossFit. Uh, you have the complex gymnastics, you have a complex weightlifting. We have that as a program. We also have NCX, which is our expression of just fundamental strength conditioning, where it's a barbell lift or some type of lift every day, followed by some type of conditioning that lasts anywhere from 12 to 20 minutes. When we reopen our locations, we are gonna reopen with NCX and then start to, you know, after member feedback, then transition back Back into NC Metcon. That's that's our initial idea. Start off with a fundamental strength conditioning program, get people comfortable with barbells again, get people comfortable with these 12 to 20 minute workouts, 
And then we can start sprinkling in things like snatching or higher complexity lifts. Initially, that's what we're doing um, at NC Fit. Meanwhile, we still have NC Go, which is our at-home dumbbell version. We will still be providing that to our members. And I would encourage you guys who, you know, to look at this more as a hybrid model moving forward. I think COVID opened a lot of people's eyes to having brick and mortar also meet digital. And so we will still be providing that for all of our collective gyms. And then also for all of you, I'd recommend having your in-gym programming and then maybe have something your members can do until they feel comfortable to come back into the gym. Um, and Jason, you know, can, I, can I interrupt? Just a quick question. Um, are you changing anything like with your actual membership offers when, when you reopen? Are people signing up and paying the same they had been before? How, how are you handling the membership changes? Th that's a great question. So what we did when we, when we shut down, we put every member on hold. Now, a lot of gyms who had 100, 200 members, they didn't have to do that. For us, you know, in the Bay Area, we have thousands of members, and it didn't work to just keep charging people. We, we weren't in that position. And so we put everybody on hold, and they opted into the membership of their choice. One option was to put their membership back on full freight, and we would refund their rate to them after. So let's just say we're closed for three months. We'll then credit them back three months once we reopen. So we got that cash flow, and we were able to disperse it once we reopen. Another option was $40 a month with just our digital products. Moving forward, we will still continue with the $40 a month membership for all of our digital products, but we'll also have, um, what we're thinking is maybe two to three more tiers, and we're, we're, we're solidifying this now. One would be digital and open gym. So for those people that don't feel comfortable taking classes, maybe we go our digital products plus open gym would be, let's just say, let's say I mean $100 a month. Our traditional NC Fit classes that have a class capacity of, let's just say, for sake argument, 12 people would be $200 a month or $220. And then we might incorporate some of this um, semi-private personal training, which caps out at, at three people. And those classes would, that membership would be a little bit more expensive. That's what we're playing with. And um, we don't have anything fully solidified, but that's where we're going, is we're trying to tailor to the people that really want to keep it small, small. And because we run two floors, one big room, one small room, we could accommodate those type of things. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, so I kind of cut you off there. Go ahead. Where were you going? Next? No, no, no. I, I was just saying for us, when we're thinking about initially reopening, we're thinking about starting off slow and then building our way up, creating a demand, and then and then and then building because expenses are going to come in real quick if you open back up with 100 classes a week, for example. Um, we're also thinking about trying to match around peak times, obviously. And then yep. we're thinking about programming in terms of ways, not necessarily what people might want. They might want to come in and be like, dude, I haven't snatched in a month. I want to snatch. Okay, cool. We have open gym, right? We got you. But for our classes, it's really important to kind of reintroduce them to intensity loading in a systematic way. So we keep them coming in. What I don't want is someone to come in a few days be broken, sore, or hurt, and then we don't see them again. So for us, we're erring on the side of, hey, let's let's get in our workouts, of course, right? But let's focus on NCX for a little bit, more fundamental strength conditioning before we start incorporating our Metcons and uh, more uh, Olympic lifting and gymnastics from, from that perspective. But I think a big thing that we want to talk about on this webinar is class reservations. I think most people, what I was just talking about with programming and and class offerings, I think they're like nodding their head like, yeah, I think it makes sense, I hope. But when it comes to actually administering class reservations, I think that's where we should pivot to. Before that, did you wanna answer any questions, Brendan, or what do you wanna do? Uh, so I think it's great, actually. The questions coming in are really tailored to exactly what, what we're about to get through with this, uh, with talking about class reservations and the template we're gonna share. Um, so I think, uh, I think we'll answer a lot of these questions as we move into that. Um, and so, I think the important thing here is whatever you decide to do when you reopen, communicating that clearly to your members and your audience is super important. And so I'm going to share a template. Um, and again, this will be, you guys will be able to download these. They'll also be emailed to you afterwards. But this is a template that um, Jason will have you talk through. Really, it seems like what people are, are uh, trying to figure out is uh, how big their classes should be and, and how they should handle reservations and how they should handle things like drop-ins and free trials. So it's a really good way to talk through this in the form of a potential email or Facebook post that you could send your members. Um, so I am going to share that right now. And then right after we talk through this is when Carla is going to share her screen and we'll show everyone how to set this up in Wattify.
All right, so let's start at the beginning here. Um, Jason, you want to start just talking through, um, I guess, the first point here around how many athletes you're capping your classes with and then go through each one of these bullet points? Yes. So just to put some color on this, um, this is an email that we sent out to our members pre-closing. And so what's important to note here is that before we closed, NC Fit had been debating for a very long time about having class reservations, um, specifically the location that I'm at right now in Mountain View. We had classes that were very large and we were getting concerned about um, class capacity. And so we had already drafted a lot of this stuff, but we weren't prepared to execute on it until a few days before we were actually mandated to close, we did release this. And some of the things that we took into consideration, I'm trying to see if I could zoom in on this a little bit, but um, some of the things that I took into consideration are uh, communication with our staff before communication with our members. And so what was important for us is, it's easy for me as, let's just say the founder, to say, hey guys, we need to, we need to you know, make sure everybody reserves a spot, and if they don't reserve a spot, we can't let them into class. But the problem is, is that the, the staff are the ones that are actually having to administer that, and they're the ones that are gonna get yelled at. And so I think it's really important that before anything, we first sent a message to all of our staff, hey guys, this is our plan, this is what we're doing, and I think COVID is a really great time for this because prior to COVID, we were nervous at, at, at doing this. When we tried it one time, it backfired on us because we didn't have a buy-in from our team. But once COVID hit, it was a really easy way to say, guys, this, isn't, this is non-negotiable. We have to do this. And so getting your staff bought, it on, bought in on the why, I think right now is really important, and, and the system. Because once the system starts to break down, it's really easy for members to start taking advantage. And we learned that the hard way. When we first rolled this out, what we did, we based our class capacity on at the time what we felt comfortable with. Very subjective, it was what I felt comfortable with, walking into the gym. Now, we're basing our capacity on what the state is gonna mandate and county. And so for each one of you guys, it's gonna be different. It might be 10, it might be 12, it might be five. You need to find out what your local and state government is mandating and then put that in for the reservation system. Yeah. Other things that we took into consideration were how many hours ahead of time should we allow people to reserve classes? And for us, we came up with 72 hours. Now we had talked to guys from Orange Theory, Soul Cycle, Berries. We had talked to a lot of industry leaders and we came up with 72 hours. Is that the best? I don't know. But we felt like that was long enough that people could make a commitment, but not so long that they forgot that they made the reservation. So we came up with 72 hours. So basically, if there's a class 72 hours from this moment, I could go in there and sign in for that class. Now, when I, when I reserve that class, I'm sure Carla will go into it, um, there's a whole process that we clearly communicated with our members of what that looks like. What we found is that we have to over-communicate, 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 especially on something as difficult as this. Um, so are, do you want to shift to how to do it, or do you want me to keep talking about some of these points? Uh, why, why don't you – so we talked about, just to wrap this up before we uh, go into how to do it and modify – you touched on limiting the total number of athletes, opening 72 hours prior to start time. Um, but uh, a last note on this, cancellations. Um, and yeah. someone, asked a question, someone asked a question about this. How are you handling cancellations? Um, and I know you had, you, know, you had one policy before that you kind of learned from. So, so at least what's your current thinking on how to handle, can't handle late cancellations or no-shows? Yeah, let, let me address two things. So number one is our... Uh, athlete numbers can be based on state and county guidelines. Number two, we're going with 72 hours, um, but there, there's no right or wrong there. That's just what we believe is appropriate. Um, reservations remain open until class start, class start time. That's what we've decided. So if let's just say there's eight people in the class and someone walks in, they want to take it, we can still let them in. If you close it an hour in advance, then you can't quite do that. So for us, we're leaving it open until the class start time. Um, once a class reaches a reservation limit, um, they join the wait list. Now, what we went with is athletes on the wait list are emailed in the event space opens and first reply will be added to the class roster. So there was two ways we could have looked at this. I know Wattify has ways of doing this. Option A is to email the person based on when they actually went in to reserve the class, right? So if, if Carla goes in and wants to reserve a class but it's filled and then I go in right after, she would get the first right to go in there. Another way of doing it is you blanket email everybody that's on the wait list to let them know that the class is open. 
we chose initially to go with the systematic approach. So we're gonna email you. If you don't get back to us within X amount of time, we're gonna email the next person, blah, 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 blah. That's why we went with it, so that people could feel like there's some type of fairness there. You're gonna to have to determine what works for you, but the important thing that I think we're getting to, and I think Brandon and Carla would agree, is whatever you do, document it like we did. So it's clearly communicated on what the systems and processes are. Now this was our original email that we did overnight. Once we reopen, which we're estimating we're gonna be reopening in July, we're gonna start communicating with our members as soon as we can about what this process looks like. The earlier we can communicate, the more effectively we can, the better off it's gonna be when we reopen, is kind of the theory. Now, when it, in regards to cancellations made within three hours of class start time, um, we, if, if you cancel before three hours, there's no penalty, there's no nothing, there's nothing. But we figure that within three hours, you probably know if you're gonna make the class or not. That's a, that's a I, I know it's very subjective, but that's just what our thought was. And originally we wanted no penalty or fee associated with cancellation. The reason why we did this is because we, 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 were, we were announcing this like overnight. But with the, the lead up to it, we, we, we are positive that there has to be a late fee. There has to be, in our opinion. And if you talk to any other industry lead, you know, people, they all agree. Because what happened is when we rolled this out the first time, everybody just blanketed. They opened gym, class, they, 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 they took over everything just in case. But what happened was then other people couldn't get in for classes. So for us, the way we're looking at it from a cancellation perspective is we're gonna charge five to $10 if you don't, if you, um, now look, the first time, it's a case by case basis. Maybe the first time we let it go, right? But as long as it was clearly communicated, we will uphold it, five to $10 is the number we're looking at. And then if you're a punch card, right, then you will, you will, you will remove that spot from your punch card. So if you're on a membership, we're gonna charge you five to $10. If you're on a punch card, we're gonna utilize that space. Because you have to understand is that as long as we communicate it, everybody knows that the, the heart of the deal, like what we talk about all the time is what is the heart of the deal? What's the, what's the goal? The goal is to provide a safe and effective area for people to work out in. And having class capacity is good for everybody because then they can know what the expectation is. They're not gonna come in one day and have a class of 12 and come another day and have a class of 30. They know that when they come in, they're gonna be a safe environment. That's important. And the class reservation system is critical to uphold that. And, and I think one really important note is gyms, even gyms that were doing reservations uh, before coronavirus, maybe they had a 20, 25 person cap and it wouldn't really matter if one person canceled late so they didn't have a fee. But if your class sizes are now 10 people, 12 people, every spot that's being taken up is, is revenue that, uh, that's super important to the business. So um, totally agree with requiring some sort of late, uh, late cancel fee. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll show you guys exactly how to do that. Last question before we jump into Wattify Core uh, and have Carla walk through. Um, some people are asking about free trials or new members. And I don't think we've touched on that yet. What, what are you thinking about right now in terms of potentially uh, getting new members in the gym and, and how has that changed? Yeah, it's a really great question because initially what we need to do is we need to accommodate our member base and make sure they feel the love because they've been supporting us for the last couple of months and it's important for us. So if we have a class capacity of 12, it's going to feel really unauthentic if we have four of those spots reserved for a free trial. And so for us, and we haven't gotten the full green light specifically in California or our international sites when we can reopen, but once we do, my hypothesis is that we are gonna um, book it because of our staff, we have a large staff, we're gonna book one-on-ones. And I liked one-on-ones yep. in the first place anyways, and we could do that outside of peaked class times. And so for us, we're gonna be doing intros one-on-one -on -one instead of them coming in for class. And I think for people who are listening, they need to take that in consideration. You know, One of the challenges we ran into for a long time is that if someone comes in for a class, we wanna provide the most optimal experience possible and I think that one-on-one -on -one connection, as long as you have someone doing a really good job of it, is a great way to do that. Now, if you're having 500 leads a month, you might need to, I mean, that's probably a good problem. You gotta figure it out. But for <laughs> us, the amount of leads we have and for the amount of staff we have, we'll revert back to one-on-ones for us. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. And I think, I think that's a great way to do it. Like you said, it, it keeps the classes open for members and it, you can accommodate them off peak times. Um, which right now you're right. trying to maximize that peak time because of, because of the smaller classes. Um, all right, great. So I'm going to just click through this email really quick just to show you guys one other thing. Like I think NC Fit did a really good job here showing um, their athletes just some screenshots and instructions on how to reserve classes in Wattify, whether it's from our athlete app, um, the legacy app, or from their desktop. 
So again, we'll, we'll be sending out this PDF so you guys can see, you know, exactly what the copy was in here. You can copy and paste it into an email or a Facebook post. Um, you can change the, the placeholders to whatever your class sizes are. Uh, but thanks, thanks for making that available and sharing that, Jason. I think that's going to help people a lot. Um, yeah. And I and just a note on that, Brendan is like we created this because we 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 are we are big believers in clear communication, and it's really important, especially with something like this that's so new and different, that you over communicate it. You think your members know they don't, and so I think it's important to to you know steal ours, right? Yeah. Just take this. Um, if you're on Wattify, if you're not on Wattify, go make something similar, right? But but if you don't put it out there and you just say, hey guys, go reserve a class, I think you're setting yourself up for failure. I think you want to over, over focus on the delivery so that once someone comes in, you at least know that you provide them the tools necessary. Yeah, awesome. All right, so I know we have a lot of questions. We are going to get to questions here in a second, guys. Hang in there. I am just going to hand it off to Carla now. Uh, Carla, if you can walk us through the exciting back end of Wattify Core and where to actually set things up. Absolutely. Just let me know. Can you guys see my screen? Because I can't see you guys anymore. Yep, we can see your okay. screen. Perfect. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and touch on everything that Jason just went through. Um, Brendan, if I'm missing anything, just feel free to yes. uh, raise your hand. Um, basically, I'm gonna start in your recurring classes. So I'm just in my demo right now. I'm under classes list, and I'm looking at my recurring class list because what I want to do is if I didn't have reservations prior to this, um, or if I had, like Brendan said, maybe a reservation of 20 people, I just wanna make sure that I can come in here and make the adjustments that I need. So I'm just gonna start in um, any recurring class template. You guys are gonna wanna click into each of them and make these changes there. But if you scroll down to the days of the week that the classes are offered, you have the ability here to add your reservation limit. So I'll just want to do that for every class. And then for each class, I also have the ability here to allow the wait list. So when I add a reservation limit and when I allow that wait list for these classes, down below, it's going to open up some new windows that you may not have seen before. So I'm just going to scroll down below. You're going to see two things. You'll see uh, the options for the wait list, which Jason touched on. Basically, you have two options here. Um, either you can have all of your athletes that are on the wait list uh, emailed at the same time and the first reply gets added to the class. Or the newer option that we recently added is a uh, priority wait list where the first person added to uh, the wait list will be the first person added to the class. So that will work in priority order. The other thing that'll happen when you're adding reservation limits is these reservation windows open up also. So just using um, Jason's example, uh, reservations open 72 hours prior to start time. That gives the person the opportunity to make that reservation three days in advance. Um, and then you can decide whether or not you want those reservations um, to close prior to the start time. Here, you also have the ability to um, indicate what your late cancellation was, would be. So what would you consider a late cancellation? Um, so you guys can make an adjustment here. Now, the important thing to note is, well, if I go ahead and save that, is that these changes will have to be made on the individual level in each template if you guys already have the templates created. Under my classes settings, I do have global settings here. These, if any changes are made here, so if I were to close this window a little bit, these actually wouldn't apply to my classes that have already been created. These reservation um, settings that you indicate here would apply for new reservation or new um, templates moving forward. So any new classes that I've created. Um, the other thing to note, and I, I think we touched on this as well, is that in your class reservation limits, so if I'm limiting a class to five people, um, free trials and drop-ins, should you uh, keep those options enabled, they do account, account, or count against that class limit. So just come, something to keep in mind. The other thing that I wanted to show you guys is under classes and settings, this is where our, if I scroll down again, our late cancellation settings and our no-show settings live. 
So if I hit the edit button next to late cancellation settings, you'll see that I have the ability to either count the late uh, cancellation towards their attendance limit. So if they're on a limited or session-based membership, um, you have the ability to remove that punch from them. You also have the ability to add a charge, um, which will automatically um, be generated should that person late uh, cancel within that, that limit that you've already set in the window of the recurring class template. The other thing that you have the ability to do um, is turn on the late cancellation email template. So if I turn this on, this will be sent to the athlete um, after they you know, have been considered a late cancellation. Um, these uh, templates can be edited. So you have the ability to edit this here. You also have the ability to put the fee in or whatever the penalty that you are going to um, uh, apply, you can put that right in here. So just make sure that those are, these email templates are enabled should you want them to go out. And then we have the no-show settings, which lives independently. So if you want to implement a no-show setting um, against a member. So I have a reservation for class. I do not show up to class, which means I've never signed, I haven't signed into that class. I could, one, uh, count that class against my limited membership. Um, two, I can auto charge if I'd like. I can do one or the other. Um, I can do both, but you'll just go ahead and indicate what that fee is right there. And then you also have the ability to enable the no-show email template that'll basically say, hey, we missed you, you weren't at class. And you could also let them know about the penalty that they've just incurred. Um, so just something to keep in mind for coaches, because um, Jason's talking about how he's gonna be, you know, making sure that he's communicating with his coaches prior to the athletes is, uh, one thing they'll probably wanna do is make sure that they do a little bit of a head count at the beginning of class. If somebody has reserved, ends up at class, forgets to sign in, they would be considered a no-show um, if they are not signed in. So uh, you might want your coaches to just take a look at, at the coach board, make sure everybody who's there has been accounted for and signed in um, so that no one incurs no-show fees um, that they shouldn't be getting. And then just make and sure you're saving all this. Yep. Yeah, Carla, just to interrupt because I saw yeah. something come in from Stacia Fisher. I think it's a really good point, Okay. which is um, she's just saying uh, more of a, uh, suggestion, but she's saying to limit high touch areas, they're asking members to check in on their phone um, because if they don't check in, they'll forget uh, or they'll uh, they'll end up with a no show fee or penalty even if they were there. And so that's a really good point. Like make sure that if your kiosk, uh, if you're trying to reduce the number of people who are in the same area, you're having people use their phone. You know, make that part of a part of the uh, the process process yeah. for your coaches at the beginning of class. Yeah, um, absolutely. So yeah, Stacey, that's a great point. Um, and then Carla, just one last thing. Can you, unless you had more to go through, can you can you show the daily reservation limit settings? Yeah, and how I actually people can was going to sure. go there. Sure. Perfect. So I was actually going to touch on that real quick um, because I'm not sure if anybody knows where to find them. But under your classes <laughs> settings, if we go to memberships, I saw a couple questions come in. You do have the ability to set a daily reservation limit. So if you guys have any concern that people are going to go ahead and uh, reserve an unlimited amount of um, reservations in a single day, you do have the ability here to indicate that they can have X number of reservations per program um, and location. Um, so if I have this set to one, that means I have the ability to make a reservation for a CrossFit class um, uh, or a CrossFit program uh, along with, uh, say, a, a yoga class. So um, you can come right here and set that daily reservation limit um, under your class settings. Awesome. Um, and a question just came in. Go ahead, Jason. And real quick, Carla, yeah. um, one of the things I want to address is that if you wanted to as an owner, correct me if I'm wrong, you could go in every day and adjust the class capacity. So one thing that I think we should note is like, let's just say you have a workout and it's, um, I don't know, whatever. It's something very, very easy to manage large groups. Hypothetically, you can go in there and adjust them. Um, if, if, if you, if, does that make sense that every yeah, day you can make absolutely. it based on the workout? Now, now, do I think that's a pain in the ass and might cause some 
issues? Yes, but I just think that's important to note that you could if you want to adjust up and down. Yep, so you'd be able to do that. So I was showing you guys uh, the updates and let me just share my screen one more time because I think that's a really good point. Um, so give me just one second, we'll head back over here. So um, what Jason suggests suggesting is the changes that I showed you guys was on the recurring class template, which means that moving forward, these are the reservation limits. If I want to make an individual change, I have the ability to look at my calendar um, and actually adjust. So this one has a reservation limit of five. I'd be able to click in there to adjust that reservation limit. I can also work right within the classes list, which is a list of um, all of my upcoming classes, to click in here and make that adjustment as well. So I'd be able to yeah. limit that to an even smaller size or a larger size, um, whatever the circumstance would be. But yeah, that's a great point. I think for those of you that are not as tech savvy as Carla and Brendan, including myself, <laughs> right? I'd be lying to you if I told you I know much about the Wattify backend, because we have a team that's fully responsible for this. But if you're an owner operator, this is something that's just part of the gig. Um, you know, we signed up because we wanted to coach, but we realized we had to have a PL, we had to do all these different things. This is just part of it. And Wattify and these guys are trying to make it easier. And whatever man ma member management software you're using, I'm sure they have similar tools. But to think, to look at it and be like, oh, that looks hard, I'm not even gonna do it, is I think a miss right now because with coronavirus, we need to have this. It's, it's, it's a non-negotiable because you can't have a class where you have 40 people and you're going to get huge backlash. So if you're not doing this, I think uh, hopefully that was really helpful for you because I don't like to do it, but I know we need to do it. Yeah. And, and I think just one kind of note on that is like you were saying, Jason, with all of your policies, communicating to your coaches exactly what you're doing because they're going to be the ones enforcing it. And that, that includes explaining what these settings are in Wattify. So they need to know, is a member getting an email uh, if they don't show up? They need to know exactly what those settings are so that they are able to have those in-person conversations. Um, yeah. Okay, great. So we've got, a, we've got a few minutes left. I think we should try to power through some of these questions. Uh, does that sound good to you too? Yep. Yeah, I, I think it's really important to note that like some of these questions that are coming in, like anybody who says they have this thing 100% perfect is full of shit, right? The coronavirus has really changed our environment. It's changed what's going on. And we need to constantly be surveying our members, receiving feedback, and then evaluating. And I think that that's a huge takeaway from this webinar, I'm hoping, is yes, you need to be doing class reservations. You need to evaluate your peak times. You need to slowly start progressing. But you also need to be surveying your members and see what type of feedback are they providing? Because that NC fit, when it comes to personal training, when it comes to small group sizes, when it comes to all these different things, and when it comes to the tools we're providing for people at home, we are in a new territory and we need to evolve with it. Yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah, and, and actually speaking of surveys, uh, right before we jump into the Q&A, in case some people have to jump off or anything, I'm gonna send a survey out um, about this this webinar so we do a survey after each webinar we just want to hear what you guys thought and if you guys had any other ideas about future webinars um, so if you click this link you'll still you'll still be on the webinar you'll still be able to hear us but we just like to collect some data um, before we start going through all everyone's questions so you'll see that pop up right now and let's get into it I'm sure Carla and Jason you'll both have uh, some things to, to touch on, on on these questions so the, we'll just go in chronological order. Um, we'll see how many we get through. So Zach said, uh, I think we touched on this one, but if a member reserves a class and doesn't show up and forgets to cancel, would you charge them for a no-show? Jason, you were saying five to 10 bucks. Um, yeah. And you saw in Wattify where you can actually set that up. And then the, the trial members uh, we touched on as well, doing a one-on-one, -on -one, so you can do it off-peak class times for, for new members signing up. Uh, I think that's a great way to do it. Um, Let's see. Well, one thing is, yep. Um, uh, one thing I saw someone ask about a COVID waiver. I yes. have some language for it. Um, this came from Juliet Starrett and our friends. Um, uh, maybe I, you know what? Let, maybe we could send that out with the PDF, right? The COVID language we're thinking about, or do you want me just to put it here in the comments? Um. It, 
Is it uh, is it like a full document? No, not that long. Oh, uh, yeah. here. This is this is from our friends at San Francisco CrossFit, and I put it underneath Erica's question. And it just says, please understand that despite all the precautions that you other members in our San Francisco take, we cannot guarantee your health or safety and you may still be at risk, blah, blah, blah. That's an example that we received from our friends at San Francisco CrossFit that is not ours, um, but we will be using that as a template. And I recommend to see if that if you like that. Yeah, and we actually have a, a help doc out if you guys go to Wattify, uh, help.wattify. A lot of people we've seen start to reopen because we have gyms in, in Texas and Georgia and some of these states that are reopening are implementing some sort of either updated waiver or pre-class survey. Um, and, uh, and so we have a help doc on, it's called how to survey your members before class. And uh, it'll show you how to do both those things, um, how to update waivers and contracts. And also if you want to drop like a link to a Google form in a section of the WAD or in announcements, that's a good way if you want people to fill out a survey every time they're coming to class. Um, yeah, right. just don't get twisted that because you add COVID language to your waiver or any language to your waiver that you're all of a sudden not at risk. You know, every owner needs to be looking at what does your insurance policy look like? Do you have umbrella policies? Do you have a C Corp, an S Corp? You need to be thinking about these things. You know, if, if nothing is more true than right now, there's a lot of risk and liability owning a gym. And if you don't have your I's dotted and your T's crossed, just take a step back for a second and start doing that. If you have people that are contractors that should have been employees, tomorrow go adjust them. If you're not if you're not zoned right, go take care of it because these things could happen. It's a big deal. Yeah, totally. Um, all right. So Molly says, will you be running in-person classes and virtual classes at the same time? Uh, so are you still doing an online offering? And if so, can you share your media setup? <laughs> your media setup's pretty advanced. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, this goes into something, I mean, our media setup is very advanced. Um, right now I'm at our gym and it's a whole, like it's a whole production and I don't recommend it for most gym owners. We just happen to have the resources in place to do this. So we have follow along, we have our app, we have all these tools and we will be continuing to provide that to our members. Right now we're doing one live class a day on Facebook as just like a value add fun engagement, but that's not what people are paying for. People are paying for is, pre-recorded, high quality, all this stuff. Um, moving forward, we'll continue to do both, but we might reduce down the lives to maybe like a few a week. Mainly it's like an engagement tool, but it's not for someone to pay for. We're not, we're not charging people for a Facebook Live. We're charging people for all the other tools we're giving. The Facebook Live is just an additional way to engage with them. Awesome, um, and Crystal just had a note on it too and said they're gonna be doing Zoom at the same time as in-person classes when they reopen. Um, that allows people who don't want to come in to still be part of class. I, you know, that, that touches on this yeah. idea, like when you're legally allowed to reopen, it doesn't mean all your members are going to be, are going to be, uh, excited to come in or ready to come in. Of course. And I think you really need to take a step back and start asking yourself, you know, is zoom just a bridge or is it actually something you want to incorporate in your business model? And I don't know what the answer is. You need to determine that for yourself. But my gut tells me whether it's Facebook live or zoom, if I'm the coach and I'm coaching a class, I'm not coaching to the Zoom, I'm coaching the class. And so will the Zoom just kind of feel like this kind of like, like kind of second thought? I don't know, it's something to think about. Right now, the reason why people like Zoom or Facebook is so I'm engaging with you, I'm here. Hey John, get your chest up, let's go, right? But if I'm coaching a class and you're just simply a spectator watching me coach, is that gonna be the same engagement? I don't know, it's something you're gonna need to evaluate on your own. And if you are, yeah, if you are still doing Zoom classes, and, and uh, I think a lot of coaches are struggling with this right now, if they do best in person, and now you're trying to figure out how to be engaging on video, um, watch other, like, so NC Fit, Jason puts out weekly videos on YouTube Live, like, watch him coach those classes and see how in an empty room, he's still, like, cheering people on and just kind of, like, crazy energized, and it, it might give you some, uh, some ideas for how to run those virtual classes. Um, all right. Uh, this one might be for you, Carla. Luis asks, can you do weekly reservation limits or uh, or is it just that daily reservation limit, one active reservation at a time? So there is the daily reservation limit that I showed you guys. The only way you'd be able to implement a weekly reservation limit is to create a, a limited membership for that person. Right. So two times per week, three times per week, which would mean you would have to add a brand new membership to their profile. That'd be the only way to handle that. Uh, yep. Exactly. Um, 
is there a way to put a hold on someone's ability to reserve if they are a no show? Uh, there's not, uh, I think I get the question, like you're asking if someone doesn't show up, can you stop them from reserving into other classes? Uh, there's not an automated setting to do that, really. There's that no show penalty, but you can just um, keep an eye on kind of repeat offenders and then potentially put a hold on their membership would be my suggestion. Carl, I don't know if you have any yeah. other thoughts. Yeah, so if you guys are using, if you're going to use a no show and late cancellation uh, policies, there are two reports that you guys will find under reporting attendance that you'll be able to look at. There's a no show report and a late cancellation report. You guys can find repeat offenders in there and then you can, sus I would suspend uh, their account. Um, so rather than putting on a hold, I think suspending their account will give them, will actually not allow them to book into any classes. Um, and I think that would be the way to handle it. Um, but those reports will be super helpful so you guys can see uh, who those repeat offenders are. Yep. Yeah. And it, by the way, Paul, um, I think I answered the programming membership after reopening for at home. I do think it's going to be important. If you're a member of the NC Fit Collective, we will be providing in gym tools and out of gym tools. So the collective has always been about what we do for our members. And so we'll be providing that to you because I think the future is we're going to have in gym, which is right here, right? NCX, NC Metcon. But we're also going to have NC Go, which is our at home version with a set of dumbbells or whatever. And if you're a part of the collective, make sure you let us know because we provide all that to you. We cover you on both sides. And if you're not a part of the collective, obviously I have to tell you, we directly integrate into Wattify. Um, email us, collective at nc.fit, or, or um, you know, check it out on Wattify because I think it's a world-class product, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, really, especially if you're starting to run classes on different timeframes, NCFit has different programs with 30-minute classes, 45-minute classes, hour classes. Uh, easy, easy way to plug and play there. Um, Rachel says, is there a way to build this out within Wattify but not publish it yet? So there's not a way to kind of like draft those changes, but if you ever want to like tinker with them and see what the options are, you could create just like a new, uh, just a new recurring class or a new membership, whatever it is that you're, you're testing out. And then once you see all the settings, go in and edit the ones that you've already published. Um, Carl, I don't know if you, do you have any other advice on Yeah, that? I guess the, uh, yeah. So as far as like global settings like that go, um, there wouldn't be, but what you could do, knowing that, like if you if you knew what your class limits were going to be, and you knew the class uh, that the date you would be reopening, you can create a recurring class that starts on a particular day, um, and then you could set an end date for your current recurring classes. So if I knew that June first, I'll be able to reopen, and I'm going to have my class limits as ten people. I could create a re new recurring class with ten people that starts June first. And I can go into my uh, current classes and just put an end date on those um, for the day before uh, those new ones get implemented. Does that does that make sense, guys? Yeah, and, and I think um, just for everyone to know, because this touches on a lot of questions, and, and we probably won't be able to get through all the questions on this live webinar. If you're ever unsure about settings you're changing or just want a second set of eyes, you can book a call by going to oneonone.wattify.com. And literally like someone from our team, one-on-one -on -one with you can do a screen share and we can even kind of help you and do it for you or you can do it and share your screen and we can uh, confirm that everything's gonna work as you expect and, and make other suggestions specific to your account. So really recommend leveraging, uh, talking, to, talking to our support team, um, getting help on that. Just wanna mention, uh, Luke was saying, what other value adds do you give your members besides great coaching, come back to your gym? Um, and I said clean facility. I think that's going to be a huge, huge, huge thing. You know, um, super clean, professional, top notch. People are going to want it. I think that's important. It's going to be a differentiator. Um, I think uh, clear communication on what you're doing and why you're doing. Hey, guys, we're opening July 1st. This is our three step plan to keep you guys safe. When you come into the front desk, you're going to get Purell, right? Or whatever, right? You, you come up with your strategy to clearly communicate how you're going to keep them safe. And then um, a variety of resources, right? You should be the guys that are putting out programming based on what you think your members are desiring, whatever that may be. And then also providing them something that they can use at home. Um, and uh, Moaz, this is, our app looks a little bit different than the Wattify one, but hopefully one day we'll be able to collaborate on one. But <laughs> ours is a variety of options, including like mobility, the Go, Metcon, and X. So I wanted to show that to you because you asked about it. Um, there's a few questions on mass updating, like mass updating memberships, mass updating contracts. Carly, can you talk about the mass update membership feature 
And uh, so this, like Chris Patterson specifically asks, they're trying to increase their class limit from three times per week to five times a week. Do I need to create new memberships? What, what are people able to do in mass versus what they have to do kind of manually one off? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm just looking at Chris's questions here also. So um, if you are updating, so if you're going from updating people from an unlimited to limited, um, then you would have to add brand new memberships to those athletes uh, profiles. So there wouldn't be a way for you to change that, that, that limit per um, that attendance limit for them. Now, if you have a limited membership, so they already are on a limited membership and you wanted to adjust that. So I'm on a limited membership and it is 12 times per month and I wanted to, to change that limitation. You do have the ability to do that in Wattify and I would recommend booking a call and we can walk you through it. Um, but basically by um, renewing or generating their next month's membership, you'd have the ability to make that change to the attendance limit. Awesome. Um, Steve asks, is there a way to auto charge for no shows if a class is full, but not charge if a class is not full? Basically charging if there's nobody waiting since it, that's a cool, cool feature idea. Mm -hmm. Totally see the need for it. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that baked in to that no show penalty feature yet. Um, but it would uh, be I, a manual, yeah, just a manual process. If, if that was yeah. something that you wanted to implement, I would just make sure that your no show setting is turned off. Uh, that auto charge. Maybe you turn on the email template that gets sent out that kind of explains what your policy is. And then it would be a manual process of you looking at who needs to be charged and creating a manual invoice and charging them that day. Yeah. Similar, uh, similar uh, question from Robert. Um, is it possible to give priority? I assume you mean priority reservations to members who did not hold or cancel during this time. Um, there's not a way to prioritize who has access, like give early access to reservations. Um, it's it's just based on who has that membership, um, yeah. unfortunately. So uh, not not a not too easy of a way to do that. But you could also you could obviously maybe change the uh, or or manually like give uh, members different memberships or, or different access if they've stuck around for longer. Um, anything like that. Uh, weekly reservation limit we already touched on. Um, Nancy, Jason, also, do you have a hard stop? Do you need to jump off? I know I'm just kind of going through. No, I just appreciate Moa saying, thanks for great answers. No blah, blah. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> blah, blah, okay, in our industry. <laughs> and this needs to be no blah, blah. Just ask a question. I'm going to tell you what you think, you know? Like, no more blah, blah, you know? Everybody's like, oh, it's like, well, are you in the trenches? Or are you not? We're in the trenches, and I'm telling you, we're living and learning, right? We're just sharing. And um, well, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And, and I mean, honestly, that's why I was excited to do this webinar with you. It's like doing a webinar on reservation settings isn't very exciting. And when you get like one of the most famous CrossFitters of all time on to talk about reservation <laughs> settings and modify, um, it, show, it goes to show like what you were saying, Jason, like you got into this to coach maybe, but this is part of the gig. Like you have to roll up your sleeves and, and run your business um, in order to be able to, to uh, coach athletes and, and build a community. So, so this is part of it. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's really important that owners recognize, and I hope through COVID you do like, we all got into this because we fell in love with it, but what did you fall in love with? Did you fall in love with coaching? Did you fall in love with being an entrepreneur? What, what were, what were you, what were you looking for? But the reality is, is regardless of what you were looking for, there's a lot of pieces to a business and we need to recognize that. And if you don't know something, delegate it out. If you don't have the means to go get out, go learn, right? Spend time educating yourself on Wattify. If you spent two hours with Carla or an hour with Carla, your education would be so much better that your efficiency would be so high. When, when I used to do all of our financials, I spent all night trying to learn how to type in all this bullshit. Once I hired someone to teach me for two hours, all of a sudden my, my efficiency became so much better. And it's just something for everybody to think about. Take something that you're having a really tough time with you're spending time on that's not moving the needle for your business, go learn about it or delegate it out. It's really important. Um, yeah. Uh, so we had a question about um, raising rates. I think, I think one reason why you might want to raise rates, Veronica, is if you have to. So here's what I mean, all right? I'm sitting in a location that's very expensive. And if our class capacity is at 50%, that means our revenue potential 
is at 50%. And if our revenue potential is at 50%, for me to make the, the nets and, and run a business, I might have to increase rates because I can only accommodate so many people. It's like a restaurant that used to serve a steak for $20, but now they can only serve half the amount of steaks. Well then do they need to increase that price for the amount of people that are sitting there or else their business model just starts to fail. And so it's important for you to recognize Veronica and us, all of us, is that unless we get some type of subsidy, so what we're doing is we're going back to all of our landlords, right? And we're gonna try and get reduction in rent. We're gonna sit there, we're gonna make it super simple. Hey, when we signed this lease, we had revenue potential based on this many members at this cost. Now, due to state and local guidelines, we are only allowed to have half that capacity. We cannot afford to spend the same amount on rent. Let's negotiate. And I think more times than not, it's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, awesome, let's cherry pick maybe one or two more. And again, guys, if we didn't get to your question or if we did, but you had some follow-ups, uh, you know, definitely always email support at wattify.com or one on one dot .com if you want uh, to book a call. Um, okay, let's see. Yes, Michelle. Michelle says 930 is your business class. Would you recommend? Yes, yes. And it's important, Michelle, just real quick. If you're not adding a 5 a.m. or a Sunday class because you don't want to wake up early or go there on a Sunday, that's not a good reason to incorporate it or not. And so evaluate what your what your gym needs and then do it. It's a separate entity. Me wanting to sleep in has nothing to do with whether or not it's good for the business or not. And so if it's good for the business and you think there's gonna be class demand, do it. Um, and then figure it out, you know? Because 5 a.m. is our busiest class and we didn't have it for five years because no one wanted to get here at 5 a.m. But now it's our busiest class. So it's just something to think about. Yeah. Um, I'm looking through, I feel like we touched on most of these. Um, Jacinda asks if a new program is created, can I limit the count kid care? Can I limit the count in this room? Do parents have a way to tell how many kids they need spots for? Um, I think the, so once you have classes created for a program, that's where you limit the, the settings for the number of people. So you, you, you would, if you're doing like a daycare program or a kid care program, you would still create classes for that program. And that's where you can set up. The, the limit, um, even if it's like an all day class or if it's a few hours, whatever that is. Uh, Carla, do you think that answers it? Yep, nice job, Brandon. Thank you. Sometimes I uh, I know my way. Oh my God, there's so many questions still coming. Uh, <laughs> Lori, Lori you, yes, we're, yes, we're thinking on new model. I, I, I believe you're with the NC Fit Collective. We put out webinars all the time. We will be talking about this specifically soon. Do I think 15 minutes is enough for you to clean between classes? Yes. If you have, um, if you do it the right way, I, I think it is 15 to 30 minutes at the most. If you have a friend desk person, you have multiple people attacking certain areas. I don't think you're probably gonna be able to um, uh, Zamboni the floor, but I think you could identify clear areas that need to be cleaned. Um, and then the members initially do their thing. And then you come in, and you redo everything on key touch points. I think, I think 15 minutes, if you have a friend desk and a multiple coach, I think you should be fine. Uh, Jason, you want to touch on the one that just came in? What are your thoughts on CrossFit Kids? Run it two times per week, similar to what you were, similar to you, we were hit hard. It's honestly great money for the gym, but can't, not sure how to manage kids' classes with the rules. We, we've tried every class you could possibly imagine, from Oli classes to kids' classes to yoga, spinning, Pilates. And at the end of the day, we need to refine what we're doing. And having kids is just not something we're interested in. It is, uh, <laughs> what we think about is, um, you know, apply to the uh, uh, apply to the masses, live in the upper classes. Apply to the niches, live in the ditches. Right, and the reality is that's a JPism. The reality is we want to try and apply to the largest demographic possible. And so when you start applying to women only, or just gymnasts only, or just endurance, or just kids, you start to limit the class size. If there's a demand in your area, go for it, Trish. But for us. We've had to simplify and refine our offering, really improve what we're doing, and have clear communication on the why behind each class. Once we started having a variety of different classes, it just became difficult. I guarantee you, out of the people that are still on here, half of you have done some type of barbell club because you had 10 people who super, super wanted it, and the only people that ever went to them was those 10 people, and they stayed in your gym for four hours. That can't happen anymore because if they're sitting in your gym for four hours, they're taking over for other people. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, related, do you guys offer child Ryan, care? Ryan, we do not offer child care. We did in the past. Um, state and local guidelines were very comprehensive and um, we, we do not offer child care anymore and it's not something that we have an interest in for a variety of reasons, including liability. Awesome. All right, guys, uh, summer camps. <laughs> do you see summer camps? Paul, we will not be doing summer camps for kids. Um, the reality is, guys, I think it's really important. As a business, we've always gone over here, over here, over here. Look, it's a, fr but we need to refine. And I would highly recommend for all of you guys, like, why would you spend, it, you know what? If you want to do a summer camp, go for it. But I assure you, it'll be a learning experience. You're going to spend a lot of time on it, a lot of effort. There's a lot of liability. And is that in line with your core vision for your business? And if it is, hell yeah, go get it. But Paul, Luke, everybody that's, that's on this um, webinar, you need to define what are you about as a brand? What programs do you want to offer and why? And let's go after that North Star. Anything that's outside of that, get rid of it. Because it's going to be really tempting to want to offer daycare, offer this, offer that. You have two moms who really want it and you don't want to say no. But I assure you that over long term, and I've, I've gone through all of it, by the way, this is my 12th year running a gym. You need to define who you want to be, where you want to go, and anything outside of that, leave it alone. Um, all right, guys. So really appreciate the engagement. Um, and, uh, I'm going to send one more call to action. This is just something Carla helped put together. It's our guide to reopening. It touches on a lot of the topics we talked about today, uh, including all those reservation settings. Um, it has links to some programming resources, some from NC fit and more. So I'm going to send this as one last little call to action. Um, check out that guide. It's on our blog. Jason, thank you so much for coming on. Any last uh, last bits you want to leave folks with? No, I mean, look, if you haven't checked out the NC Fit Collective, I'm sure, Brendan, can you can you link um, either on there or, or if I can put a link up? If you haven't checked out the collective, we would just appreciate an opportunity to earn your business. If, if, if you want to check it out, we would really appreciate it. And then also, if you want to text me, can I give you the number to put up on the screen or something if they want to text me? Yeah, go for it. The text is a good platform that we're using now. It's really good engagement. So if you're an owner out there and you want to text me, hit up 408-706-2569. Text me and uh, we'll be engaging. 2569. Yeah, 408-706-2569. I'm going to share. The, the link is to the NC Fit Collective website, but then Jason Sell is going to be in the call to action. So you guys will see that come up right now. Um, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. I, uh, thank you guys. A lot of people stuck on for, for uh, a bit over, I know our allotted time frame. So appreciate everyone sticking on Carla. Thanks for walking through everything on the Wattify side. Again, we're going to send an email out that will have that template that we walked through on the call. Um, and you will also get a recording of this full webinar. Uh, so feel free to watch it again, share it with anyone. And, uh, and we're all in this together. So we're gonna be continuing to bring you guys educational content and resources like this. We're super excited to hear your stories as gyms start to reopen. Um, and we really hope this was helpful. Cool. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs>